Hi, this is Steve. I just thought I would post a final update on my water fast since I haven't broken it yet. Today, I just finished 40 days of water fasting, so 40 days without food. And I would love to eat. <laughs> so as soon as I get through this video, in fact, at the end of this video, I'm gonna eat my first meal um, at the end of the fast. In fact, I have it right here. It's a bowl of some cut up honeydew melon, and I'm really looking forward to eating this. So forgive me if I go a little bit speedy through this video. <laughs> um, I'll give kind of just an overall summary of what I experienced on this water fast. I know people have been sending me some emails or posting comments on my YouTube channel asking for updates about it. And uh, yeah, I've been fasting you know, beyond the 30 days of video series. So I uh, did another 10 days just to see if I could do it. Uh, but now I'm definitely ready to, to, to stop and transition back to eating. Partly that's for logistics reasons because I have a conference coming up in June and I want to have at least two weeks to break the fast before then because it includes this four course gala vegan dinner which I really want to go to. Um, I have tickets to it and I'm speaking at the event so I definitely want to have good energy and not be fasting during the event. Um, in the, just an update on the past 10 days, my energy has definitely been lower during this time physically. Uh, mentally I've been mostly okay during those days and emotionally mostly okay too. But physically, my energy just took kind of a nosedive. And I've been, you know, some days just a couch potato. This past weekend, I was just like lying on the couch, couldn't really work much or anything, just didn't have a lot of energy. Um, but most of those days, I was still able to be productive and get some work done as long as I didn't move around too much. Some days, according to my Apple Watch, I was burning less than 200 calories for movement, which means really not moving much at all. Um, but I, I made it through and I would say these past 10 days the fast has definitely been less pleasant than the first 30. Um, I'd say the, the best period of the fast was roughly days 70 to 30. The, the, I'm sorry, days 7 to 30. So the first week was a bit tough, especially the first three days because that's when there's a lot of hunger. Um, Days four to six or so were a little bit iffy because I was kind of like feeling a little bit detoxy and just adapting to it. But by the time I got into the second week, I was hitting my stride and I was able to be pretty productive. I'd say overall, of the 40 days I was fasting, about 28 to 30 days, I was able to be pretty productive. The other 10 to 12 days was not so good. Like I would just be a couch potato. And I would just, you know, accept that. I knew going into it that a fast can have a lot of those variable days where you just don't know what to expect. And so I went into it with just an open mind and uh, thought, okay, I'm, I'm not going to schedule things too much and just have, you know, uh, an attitude of going with the flow. So if I wake up and just realize I'm tanking energy-wise, I'm just going to take it easy and not try to work too much, not try to move too much, just be a couch potato. And other days, if my energy is really good, and some days it was surprising how much energy I had, um, then I would maybe you know go out for a walk or something. Uh, one day, Rochelle and I were even out for like 10 hours or so shopping and things, and that was that was wonderful. But those days were pretty rare. <laughs> um, but most of the days, I was able to sit at my desk or sit on the couch and just work on my laptop and and get a lot of work done. Sometimes more than 12 hours. Yesterday was actually a really good day for productivity. I was thinking it was gonna be a little low, but in the, in the afternoon I kind of hit my stride. and I think I worked from a, um, you know, pretty productively like all afternoon up until I think uh, right around 9 p.m. And I felt like I could even keep going for a bit after that. So that was really nice to have um, when you get those, those surges. Weight wise, I lost 32.6 pounds. So now I actually weigh what I weighed back in college, <laughs> um, which is, which is kind of cool. I didn't do this experiment primarily for weight loss, but that's a nice benefit. I do know some people do fasting for weight loss. So taking off over 30 pounds is certainly nice. Um, and uh, you know, the main reason I did it though was, was for um, an, an experiment. I wanted to see what effect it has on detoxification. Like does my mind get clearer and sharper? I definitely had some, uh, good mental clarity throughout most of the fast, but I'm I'm not so concerned about what happened during the fast I'm much more concerned about like does this have a long-term impact and it's too early to assess that um, Just my energy is you know too low. I want to see how it is going forward Also since I like running a lot. I really miss the running and I want to 
I want to see what it's like to get back into running. I mean, aside from the obvious fact of being over 32 pounds lighter, I'll probably be able to run faster and maybe have more endurance, but I want to just see how it feels in my body when I exercise again after this. Uh, do I feel cleaner on the inside or anything like that? Do I get less tired? Um, am I less fatigued? Do I recover faster from workouts? Um, you know, just kind of doing a big assessment on how this fasting may have purified my body and mind and what difference it makes. I've done a lot of detoxification experiments. This is um, one of the more intensive ones I've done. Uh, I'm not sure though if it'll be the most beneficial. I, I, what I'm seeing so far is that I suspect that doing detoxification in other ways, like with taking certain, certain substances that draw toxins out of the body, like liposomal glutathione, um, I think I got much more benefits from that. But because of the timing I'm doing this fast, after having done those other things first, I might be seeing diminishing returns. So that's a possibility too. So I'll just have to assess this in context. I did do this fast entirely unsupervised along the way. So no medical supervision. I didn't go to a fasting center. I did it all on my own at home. So I'll include, you know, a caveat, a disclaimer that you, you know, you're totally responsible if you do that kind of thing and don't blame me for it. <laughs> um, I'm not encouraging you to do that sort of thing. You know, there definitely can be some dangers. People have died on long-term fasts before and also when breaking the fast, if they do it improperly. Um, I felt it wouldn't be too risky for me because um, I've done a lot of detoxification experiments. I did a 17-day water fast last year and had no problems with it. And I just felt more comfortable about doing it at home. I didn't feel like flying off to some um, fasting center somewhere and being around a bunch of other people fasting. I thought, I want to be in my own bed, my own home. Um, and then if anything goes, starts going wrong, I'm just going to play it extra safe. So if I start having issues that seem like, oh, this is really taking a turn for the worse, I better stop. I would just stop immediately. Whereas if you do things at a fasting center, they might be able to help you course correct and correct for problems like that. I just thought, you know, I'm going to quit at the first sign of any serious issues. And throughout the 40 days, I never encountered anything I would identify as a serious issue. So I never needed to quit. Uh, so that was, that was fine. I just decided, you know, going into it, I'm going to play it safe and not take unnecessary risks. And if I feel like I'm tanking or something too badly that I can't even function, then let's break the fast. Um, but fortunately, I was able to make it the whole 40 days. Um, so, and my intention initially was just to see if I could make it to 30 days. And I think a big part of that was not going into it with this ego thing of I've got to make it to 30 days, otherwise I suck. Um, or, you know, even pushing beyond that to 40 days. It was just taking it one day, one hour at a time and constantly being tuned into my body and how I was feeling and how it was going. Uh, so, although, you know, it was nice to have that goal of having, you know, a 30 day fast, um, I, I set it as a very tentative goal, not wanting to make it an ego thing where I've got to push through all kinds of difficulties because I, you know, I was doing this for health reasons and my health comes first in this case, and I'm not going to damage my health to try to make it to some, you know, pride thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad I took that approach. It definitely made it uh, easier, I think, to just take it one day at a time. Um, my, uh, you know, I didn't do any kind of like, um, you know, medical testing, like blood testing before this. Um, someone asked me about that. And so I don't have any like blood data or anything to share. You know, I did take some measurements simply along the way. So I'll share some of those. Um, I, I mentioned the weight loss. Um, I, I do, I, I have been testing like urine pH um, uh, at different times. And I've noticed that like when I've done different detoxification experiments, it often makes my urine more acidic as more acid waste is coming out of the body. Uh, however, when I eat raw, 100% raw foods, my urine is almost always alkaline. If I eat cooked foods, even a small amount of cooked food, my urine is almost always acidic, pretty much always acidic. So um, a pH of seven is neutral, above that is alkaline, below that is acidic. Uh, when I was doing this fast, I saw the most acidic urine I've ever seen before, like ever since I've tested, which was a pH um, averaging around 4.5, sometimes even slightly lower than that. And you know, the pH is a logarithmic scale, so even a one point difference makes a, it's a huge leap. So, you know, typically if I'm eating cooked food, I'll see pH is around six or so, but to go all the way down to 4.5, that's, you know, that's a really big shift. 
Um, and, and it really tells me my body was just dumping lots and lots of acid waste along the way. So that was kind of interesting to see. I've, you know, of all the other detox experiments I've done, I've never seen a pH that low before. Um, I, I checked blood pressure as well, and I was using a, a blood pressure monitor. I have some, um, I have some stored readings on this I can show. Um, I just took like three readings before, um, ju just before I started recording this video. So my blood pressure definitely dropped a bit um, on the fast. And so here's like the most recent three readings that you get. You get a, uh, it's a 96 over 71, and what do we have here? A 96 over 66, and 95 over 71. So that's, you know, fairly consistent. Um, an earlier reading from, I think, Monday was 98 over 66. And then going back a bit more, um, uh, let's see, like just, you know, like, I guess on, I think this was Sunday, 102 over 64. And then going back, I didn't take any blood pressure readings right before the fast, but um, I have some stored readings from January when I last used this, January 24. And so I was like 109 over 72. Um, back then, and another one shows 112 over 73. So I, I didn't have high blood pressure to start with, but you can see that it was a bit of a significant drop in blood pressure, um, you know, uh, just from, the, you know, earlier till the fasting point now. Um, so that might be something to, you know, to watch out for. The, I'd say the hardest part of the fast was Physically, the hardest part was just dealing with the low energy, like just not having the energy to do much. There are many times I wanted to go out, do something, and I was just like, ugh, I just barely have energy to move around the house, especially these last 10 days. Um, I miss exercise. I miss running. The hardest part, though, of the fast was not really physical, I would say, because you get used to the, used to the low energy, you just have to adapt to it, but it was psychological. It's just like not having the comfort of those meals. I would say that part did get easier. That was probably hardest the first two or three weeks. But as it went on, I just kind of got used to not eating. Um, and then I began to at least embrace a bit the extra productivity from not having to eat all the time and being able to work for like eight hours at a stretch and not take a meal break. Um, you know, just get up to get water, go to the bathroom, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's, it, it definitely is hard on the psyche, I would say like just adapting to the comfort, the missing aspects of, of those meals. You know, it's a very grounding effect being able to eat, uh, especially when Rochelle came in town. She, you got into town, she's here watching me do this. You got into town on May 1st, was it? Okay, so she's been in town for over three weeks now. Um, and, you know, watching her have meals and eat meals, that can be difficult. Um, one thing that was cool about the fast, though, was a heightened sense of smell. And I noticed this when I did last year's fast as well. My sense of smell gets really sensitive. So I, I would like love um, getting scented candles and just like burning different scents and, and, and smelling them or using essential oils and just smelling everything. So when Rochelle would make these meals, like a bowl of udon noodles with peanut sauce or something like that, I would you know, like say, let me sniff this. <laughs> and I'd be like taking the bowl, just inhaling it. And it was just like, you know, total symphony of bliss. Just the, the different layers of, of smell that I wasn't noticing before. And this one thing she bought um, at Trader Joe's, this eggplant hummus. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Like just, I just kept wanting to take off the lid and smell it and just inhale the aroma and enjoy it. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually eating some of that at some point. Um, probably not this week, though, because that would be a little bit too much too soon. Uh, so, you know, the sense of smell is kind of a mixed blessing, though, because, like, some things can be a bit bad. Rochelle's frowning because she knows what to say. So when she would eat something with, like, onion in it, it's like her whole body just smells like onion. And I'm like, oh, your breath. <laughs> so it's like, you know, Good smells, it just it heightens the sensitivity to it, but it's the same thing with slightly less pleasant smells. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's a thing you just have to adjust to. Um, it's very common, though, that, you know, because your, your, your senses get more tuned um, and cleaner with the fasting, like your taste buds detoxify as well. So it's a very common experience for food to taste much better after a fast. 
Um, I remember that after my last fest. I started the, I, I broke the fast last time with some cantaloupe, and unfortunately it wasn't very good cantaloupe, so it didn't really taste that amazing to me. But then I had some strawberries a little bit after that, fresh strawberries, and they were so good, like just so many layers of flavor. And I've seen other videos of people breaking their fasts and just like having a mouth orgasm over the taste of the food, even if they're just having some, something really simple like watermelon, because uh, all these flavors kick in that you weren't noticing before. Uh, so that's something I'm looking forward to soon. Uh, I did get a rash on my chest for part of it. It's still a bit there. It's mostly gone now. Um, it was a little bit itchy. It's just a common symptom of, of detox. Uh, I did have some nausea or queasiness in my stomach, especially the past few days. It would just come and go. I noticed it would be worse if I move around a bunch, and it would tend to go away and subside if I was lying down or sitting down. So um, I noticed I had that this morning too. Um, it almost makes me wonder if it's what morning sickness feels like. Uh, but it's just like this, this constant background feeling of nausea, but not enough like you're really gonna throw up because there's like nothing in me but water right now. So uh, that's, that's definitely something I'm hoping will go away when I start eating again. Uh, what else? Um, I definitely felt more antisocial as the fast went on. I did some meetups with people socially earlier in the fast and just a, um, you know, a meetup with like a local friend along the way later in the fast. But for the most part, I just felt like kind of being in my own space and not socializing except with Rochelle and just kind of staying at home most of the time. And it was mainly just to, you know, due to the low physical energy. Uh, conversation can just tire me out too much. Earlier in the fast, first few weeks, wasn't an issue, but as the fast went on, I just feel too drained by it. And, you know, especially if I'm around other people that are eating too, then it's kind of like you don't feel like you're sharing as much in that experience. Uh, so, you know, that's something I'm hoping will ramp up as well after the fast. Uh, there's no real, you know, there, there was no real hunger along the way. I still didn't reach the point where I felt like true hunger returned. Um, I would often have like some stomach cramping or just some like grumbling in my in my in my tummy, but you know I wasn't feeling hungry per se, so that was kind of interesting. I had that for the first three days, but then it went away. Uh, what else? Emotionally, I was mostly flat. You know, emotionally, I wasn't really blissing out or anything much. I had some points where I was feeling a little bit of euphoria, but it was pretty short lived. Um, other times especially when my energy was low and I feel like I was pushing myself too much, I would get a bit grumpy or irritable, as Rochelle can attest. But those were usually just for, you know, a few hours or so, um, and then it would pass and I'd, I'd be okay after a while. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's, that's about it for um, the general updates. Oh, one, one thing is I did have some, um, you know, food cravings now and then, like not hungry per se, but like craving a bunch of odd foods, some of which I haven't had in a while. Especially early in the fast, I remember I was craving Thai food a lot. Later in the fast, I don't think I noticed as, you know, such a strength in the food cravings. They would come up now and then, but it was mainly like triggered by something like seeing a movie where somebody was eating something that looked good or watching Rochelle eat something that looked good. Uh, but otherwise, it wasn't too much of, of a big deal. Um, I, I wanted to share one other set of questions and answers uh, because my friend uh, Lonnie, uh, who lives in Hawaii, emailed me recently uh, with a bunch of questions she wanted to know about the, about the fasting. And so I thought I'd just go over it. I already emailed her answers to these, but I'll just kind of go over her questions and sort of do um, you know, some of the summary answers if it, I haven't already addressed it on the video. Um, so one, one question she had was, what mindset did you employ to move through the first three days of, hung of hunger? Um, although you educated yourself on fasting, the challenge of hunger remains. Did you call upon your source, spiritual helpers, guides, angels for help? Did you meditate or, or you know, or what? Um, interestingly, none of that. The, I mean, I did meditate a little bit throughout the fast, but it wasn't really a big thing. The main thing I used to get through those first three days, uh, strategy-wise, was distraction. Um, it was basically, um, I just... I knew going into it that it would be difficult if I kept thinking about food, so I wanted to put my mind elsewhere. So I started the fast at 10 a.m. on a Friday morning. It was Friday, April 14th that I started the fast. And 
I, the last meal I had was some fresh juice, about a quarter of fresh juice. And that kept me going for most of that day. So that day I basically just worked and used work as a distraction. And then I knew my energy would probably start tanking the next couple of days. So I just decided I'm just going to be a couch potato on Saturday and Sunday. So days two and three. And I'm just going to binge watch TV shows, movies, documentaries, things like that. So I just like basically sat on the couch all day, lied down on the couch and just watched, you know, watch TV all day just to distract my mind. Um, and it worked great. It, I think it was better than the approach I used with the previous fast um, of like trying to do activities or things like that to distract me. Just like get into a show. Um, I think I think it was that weekend or maybe it was a different weekend when I wasn't feeling great that I just binge, binge watched like 10 episodes of season two of Better Call Saul. Um, I love the series Breaking Bad. Um, Better Call Saul's I just thought so so but it got me into the story and I just focused on the story the whole way through and that was an easy way to get through the first three days so distraction uh, it's the same strategy used by four-year-olds um, if you've read about the study of the marshmallow test where marshmallows are put in front of four-year four-year-olds um, there's an experiment done years ago kind of a, a self-discipline self-regulation test where you give a four-year-old a marshmallow and you tell them if they can wait 15 minutes before eating it you'll give them a second marshmallow. And, you know, there's been things that have shown that like the, the four-year-olds who can wait that 15 minutes without eating the marshmallow during that time, the first one during that time, have like all kinds of better results in life. Like they score better on, on tests and they, they do better in school and they have better relationships and better health and better financial situations and so on. So it's kind of interesting um, to just apply that strategy of distraction because that's what the four-year-olds do to get through it. They just like, you know, close their eyes, they look away, they, they try to, you know, hum, hum or something, you know, cover their eyes, eyes so they can't see the marshmallow. And so that, that thing that's, you know, glaring at them, they try to turn their attention onto something else and that works for them. Uh, so that's basically the same strategy I used. Uh, what else? Um, did your blood sugar ever plummet? And if so, how did you deal with this to come into balance again? No, I wouldn't say I had serious blood sugar issues. There were times where I would be out walking with Rochelle or just in the house where I'd start feeling weak and tired. And so I would just like sit down and rest for 10 or 15 minutes, drink more water, breathe, and my energy would come back up again. I noticed my body is very stingy in the energy it generates. So I would basically just, you know, adapt to that. And if I would rest more, it would give time for my energy levels to come back up again. And I noticed my energy was often going in waves. If I would have a day where I do a lot of activity, uh, walking around a lot, I'd pay for it the next day and my energy would just tank um, or maybe a, a, a couple days later. And then if I had those days where my energy was tanking and I just took it easy and rested and spent a lot of time just lying on the couch or, or sitting down a lot, um, and not moving around too much, then my energy would start to rebound and begin coming back up. And that, so that was really nice. Later in the fast though, it almost didn't matter because even, even when I would rest, I'd still feel a bit tired. It was like it would just squash the highs down a bit lower. Um, it would still have, you know, there'd still be that effect of resting being helpful, but it wouldn't raise me up as high again. Uh, so yeah, yeah, just resting and adapting to it um, really helped a lot. Let's see, at what point did you begin to experience a sustained clarity of mind? Um, I, would, I would say after the first week, it was, it was pretty good. Um, the first week, I was definitely having some mental fog, and there were still some mental fo mentally foggy days after that, like Monday, um, May 22nd was pretty foggy for me, but otherwise, most of the days were, were pretty mentally clear. So it was definitely like second week and beyond that that was really good. Um, at, any, at any point, did you experience a sense of panic or anxiety? And if so, how did you move through this? No, no, no panic, no anxiety, nothing like that. Um, I, you know, I, missed, I missed food along the way, but otherwise, it, I didn't find it particularly stressful or feeling anxious. Um, I just took it one day at a time. And what, what helped um, to deal with the emotional side of it was just to tell myself this is a temporary experience. It's going to pass. This is not forever. I'm eventually going to be able to eat again. Just take it one day at a time. I've done other 30 day trials that were challenging too. I'll make it through. You know, there is a rainbow at the end of this pot of gold. You know, I'll get to that point. Um, uh, let's see. Did, um, 
let's see, but basically did any like divine insights or revelations occur? Um, nope, nothing like that. I can't say I got struck by divinity or any spiritual experience of this wasn't really like that. Um, do you feel a closer connection of source or a closer connection to source and the spiritual realm because of the fast? No, uh, quite the opposite actually. The fast was not like an enlightening spiritual experience for me, not remotely. It was a very different direction. It was a very grounding experience in physicality. So it was not about the spiritual dimension for me, it was really about getting more in touch with my body and physical space and physical reality. My thinking became, I would say, very grounded, very practical. Um, I, I began paying more attention to my house. <laughs> um, you know, just like how I felt in my body. It was like, you know, I guess more earth energy than air energy. Uh, it was, you know, definitely feeling like coming down into the physical space even deeper. And that was a really cool experience. Um, I didn't know, you know, how it was going to play out, but it wasn't really a, um, a, a, a you know, uplifting spiritual experience in any way that I can discern. Um, it was very much about grounding. I got more in touch with my senses, you know, like touch and, and smell and what I was seeing, what I was hearing, um, especially sense of smell. So that was, that was kind of cool. Um, I definitely feel more connected to physical reality and practical ideas. So that was, that was really cool. I, I definitely made a lot of good progress on my business during this time. And in fact, I executed a six-figure launch during the fast itself. So, you know, it was like really just like the practical action steps, moving it forward one, one step at a time. And without, without um, you know, a lot of emotion, like going up and down and having a very even stable emotional footing on the fast, I think in some ways that was actually easier to do. Uh, it's definitely harder in some other ways because I don't feel like there's as much of a celebration about, you know, any successes without food because it's like food can be such a big part of celebrating something um, or just like having the presence of food in my life. So it was like, oh, I did a six figure launch, eh, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, okay, it's cool, but I probably would have enjoyed it more if I'd been able to eat during this time. So maybe that enjoyment will kick in later. Uh, let's see, at any point, did you reach a sense of euphoria? And if so, do you recall how long this was sustained in your thoughts during this period? Just infrequently, like an hour or two at a time, um, I definitely get more euphoria and more of this like really happy, blissful feeling when I'm eating 100% raw. Um, that, then it can last for days, weeks, months. Um, it becomes kind of a normal feeling, just being happy all the time. But I definitely wasn't feeling like super happy during the fast. I wasn't really feeling much, or, much at all. Uh, let's see, are you experiencing a sense of heightened mana, which is Hawaiian for sacred energy? Um, no, but I asked Lonnie, is there a Hawaiian term for feeling a heightened sense of groundedness and practical mindedness? Because maybe that's the term I need for what I'm feeling. So if there is such a term, let me know. Uh, how, how has the fasting experience altered, if at all, your way of being in the world now? Do you see the world differently? Yeah, I, I, I realized there's a lot of food in the world. <laughs> um, it's like food is everywhere. It's on, you know, TV and movies, and it's like everywhere I go out, there's food. So it just seems like there's a ridiculous abundance of food. Um, but overall, as I mentioned before, I definitely feel more in tune with my physical body, with physical reality. Um, less like, you know, up in the air on a mental level and more on like a practical grounded level. Um, you know, it's also cool to know that I can survive weeks without food. So if I ever have a crisis where I may not be able to get access to food, no big deal. At least that might be my attitude towards it. Like, okay, I've, I've done 40 days, like almost six weeks. I'll be fine. Do you think having a public goal such as the 30-day video challenge assisted in your journey? For instance, the 30-day video challenge might be seen as an accountability factor. No, not in this case. In, there have been some cases where doing public accountability um, can definitely help, and it makes me you know, more likely to finish the whole 30 days. But I, I'm at the point where I've done so many of these 30-day trials, both publicly blogging about them or on my own, 
that the accountability factor is not something I really need. If anything, it just made this particular trial more difficult to do the videos at the same time. Um, and you know, there are some days where I was just a little bit annoyed to have to do a video and I would put it off till the end of the day and finally go, oh, I'm grumbling, you know, I gotta do this video now. Um, and the past 10 days have definitely been a little easier in that sense without having to do the videos. Uh, so I'm kind of glad I committed to just doing 30 days and not doing them for the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, that was sort of like just a separate layer on it. I, I don't think it increased the accountability. I think for some people it might help if they want to do that. But even, even when I started the video series, I made a point that I'm not doing this as like an ego thing. I don't think it's good to have too much accountability to a fast where, you know, where you, you want to keep monitoring your body. So I, even as I was doing this, I wasn't really using it as an accountability thing. I was just doing a separate layer of an experiment on at the same time, which I thought would be good to combine with the fast. Um, but, you know, it, it, it was, it was uh, just added an extra layer of challenge or difficulty, but I don't think it was all that beneficial in terms of accountability. Um, and the last question, has this experience convinced you of the need or value to do another deep dive fast? Um, not, not yet, um, because I haven't had enough time to assess the fast. So that'll probably take some time. I'll have to, you know, maybe a few weeks before I really know what the long-term value of it is. Uh, this is definitely the longest fast I've ever done in my life. Um, I may never do this again. You know, may just, this may just be a one-time experiment. Right now, I'm kind of thinking it probably is. I may still do some shorter-term fasting, like seven to 10 days now and then, maybe a three-day one here and there. Uh, if I feel like I want to just do some extra detoxification lightly, but, you know, doing one this long again, I don't know. Uh, it definitely can be a gr bit grueling. Uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of a wrap-up of, of uh, Lonnie's questions. And now I actually get to eat, <laughs> to break the fast. So this is 11.8 ounces of some cut-up honeydew melon, which is approximately 120 calories, at least according to Siri. And so I'm going to see what this tastes like. Now, just before I eat this, I'm going to mention that when you break a fast this long, you want to do it very cautiously. I may not even finish this, this bowl. Um, so I'm going to start with very light foods like um, fresh melon, you know, fruit. I have some uh, more honeydew. I have watermelon. Uh, we have some grapes, pineapple. I'll start especially with the water-rich foods and not go to like bananas or starchy foods. I'll maybe, you know, introduce in the first few days some, um, some fresh juices, uh, probably just like simple juices, maybe like just plain apple juice or plain orange juice, and maybe even dilute that with water a bit. And then maybe go to more complex juices like apple celery or, you know, apple romaine, something like that, maybe some carrot juice. Um, and then, you know, explore different kinds of fruits. I'm gonna take this one simple mono meal at a time first and keep it really light because when you do a long-term fast, your digestive juices get very weak. Your body doesn't need to make all that, you know, all the digestive fluids. And so it basically shuts down production of them. So you wanna give your body time to ramp up again. And if you, if you come off your fast too quickly with big meals or complicated meals, uh, that, that can be, you know, in some cases fatal actually. So you wanna be really careful about this. So every meal I'm just gonna like, you know, eat a small amount, see how it digests, and then see what I can do next. And this first week, I'll probably just eat entirely 100% raw foods and probably not a lot of fat, um, if any, and just go for the, you know, the simple, light, water-rich foods, and especially a lot of mono meals, just to see how I digest. And if something seems like, oh, that's sitting pretty heavy, I might back off from it for a lot while, back down to simpler foods and just kind of adapt on a, you know, on a basic, uh, on a daily basis and basically a per meal basis. So let's see how this actually tastes. Mm. Wow. It's not the best honeydew in the world, but I have to say it's pretty damn satisfying when you have eaten in 40 days. <laughs> mm, that piece is sweet. Wow. Just like melts in your mouth. It's weird chewing again. I haven't chewed, chewed food in so long. Mm. Well, anyway, I'm gonna end this video now so I can enjoy my first meal 
since April 14. And what are we at right now? We're at 1049. So I'm, I remember I started the fast officially at 1003. So we're 40, so I've got 40 days and 46 minutes, basically. Right? Awesome. Okay. Bye for now.